In this video, I'll show you how to make your own Pomodoro study timer using an Arduino. The Pomodoro technique consists of alternating 25 minute study or work sessions and five minute breaks. After four study sessions, you take a longer break, typically 15 to 20 minutes. Using an Arduino with an LCD screen lets you customize the display and messages to the user, and you can add additional outputs like LEDs, buzzers, or motors. Let's do an overview of the hardware before we look at the code for this project. So on the breadboard here, I have all of the different circuit components, and the main one is this LCD screen. That is what allows you to print out messages and display the time. That screen has a potentiometer that allows you to adjust the contrast, and we have a separate video tutorial just about using these screens linked in our Arduino tutorial playlist in the description of this video. So I'm not going to go over the details of wiring that screen in this video because it has a lot of pins and all of that is covered in our separate video on LCD screens with an Arduino. And then we just have a few more pieces of hardware. We have a button that is used to start the timer that is a little easier to access than the reset button on the Arduino. And as outputs or indicators, I just have two LEDs, one that will be on during the study periods and one that is on during the break periods. But this is a great opportunity to customize this project, especially if you are doing it for a science or engineering fair. You can add your own additional hardware, things like buzzers or motors, maybe things to go off as an alarm or get your attention during those transition periods between studying and taking a break. We have lots of tutorials on other accessories and pieces of hardware you can use with an Arduino and add to your circuit, again, linked in the description of this video. I just have everything assembled on the breadboard here, but you might want to build a case or box for a clock or timer that can sit on your desk. If you do that, you might want to get some male to female jumper wires. These are jumper wires that can plug into the breadboard on one end, but have a female pin on the other end so you can take things, for example, the LCD screen and plug those pins into the jumper wire, and then this will give you some flexibility in where you mount the screen. So if you have a small cardboard box or maybe access to a 3D printer, you can build a case for your clock. To take a closer look at the wiring, we are going to switch over to Tinkercad Circuits, which is a free online Arduino simulator. We have a tutorial video about it in our Arduino playlist, which again, you can find linked in the description of this video. First, let's zoom in and look at the connections for the LCD screen. I'm going to go through these quickly because again, we do have another complete video about the screen and they have a lot of pins. So I'm just going to go through them from left to right. We have the ground pin, which is connected to ground. We have the VCC or power pin, which is connected to five volts from the Arduino. We have the V0 or contrast adjust pin, which is connected to the middle pin of a potentiometer. The outer two pins of the potentiometer are connected to five volts and ground. Then we have the RS or register select pin, which is connected to pin 12 on the Arduino. Here is where it is important to connect your screen to all the same pins on the Arduino that I have in this demo if you want to use our example code. If you swap the physical pins around on the screen, then you're going to have to change those pins in the code as well. Next up, we have the RW or read write pin, which is connected to ground. We have the E or enable pin, which is connected to Arduino pin 11. We skip the four pins DB0 through DB3. Those are unused. Then we have pin DB4, which is connected to Arduino pin 5. We have pin T DB5, which is connected to Arduino pin 4. We have pin DB6, which is connected to Arduino pin 3. Pin DB7, which is connected to Arduino pin 2 the positive or anode pin for the LED, which is connected to five volts through a 220 ohm resistor, and the negative or cathode pin for the LED backlight, which is connected to ground. Next up, we have our two indicator LEDs. I have a green one. The positive side of that LED is connected to Arduino pin six, and then the negative side is connected to ground through a 220 ohm resistor. Then I have a red LED, the positive side of that LED is connected to Arduino pin seven, and the negative side is connected to ground through a 220 ohm resistor. Finally, we have our button. One side of that button is connected to ground with a 10 kilo ohm pull down resistor. That side is also connected to our Arduino pin eight. And then the other side of the button is connected to five volts. 
So the way this button is configured with the pull down resistor, the voltage will be low by default and then the voltage will go high when you push the button. If you don't know how buttons work with an Arduino or how to use pull up or pull down resistors, again, we have a video just about buttons in our tutorial playlist, which you can find linked in the description of this video. Now let's take a look at the code. And again, the basic idea here with the Pomodoro technique is that we are setting a timer for intervals of studying and breaks where we have 25 minute study sessions followed by five minute breaks. We repeat that four times and then that last break is longer like 15 or 20 minutes. So the Pomodoro technique does have these default times, but the code is fully customizable and you can set the time intervals and the number of repetitions to whatever works for you. Before we continue, I should point out that all of this code will be available along with a link to this public Tinkercad circuit in the video description. So if you want to copy and paste the code instead of transcribing it from the video, make sure you go get the link in the video description. Anyway, going back up to the top of the program, the first thing we do here is include the liquid crystal library for controlling our LCD screen. We then declare some variables for keeping track of the number of seconds, minutes, and the total count or number of study sessions we have done. We're gonna use that to display the timer on the screen and decide when to do our long break instead of our short break. We then have constant variables for the duration of each one of those periods, our study period and our two different break periods in minutes, and the number of repetitions we want to do before we get to a long break. Next up, we have a break duration variable that we will use to time the breaks later. You'll see what I mean when we get to that point in the code. Then we declare a bunch of pins that we are going to use to control our hardware. So we have two LED pins, we have a button pin, and we have a bunch of pins used to control the LCD display. And again, that's where I mentioned that if you want to use our example code without having to shuffle these around, make sure you wire things in the same order that I showed in the circuit over here on the left. In the setup function, we initialize all of the pins used to control our hardware. So we define the size of the LCD screen. Again, this is covered in more detail in our LCD screen video. We set our LED pins as outputs and our button pin as an input. We then display the initial message to the user on the screen that says press button to start. And this is an important part. We want to wait for that button press before moving on to the rest of the program. So normally an Arduino program would execute the code in the setup function once and then immediately move on to the beginning of the loop function. But we don't want to do that yet. We want to wait until the user presses this button. So we do that with this while loop. So we have while digital read button equals low. So the button is not pressed. We just do nothing. We just wait. And as soon as the button is pressed, then this digital read is going to go high. So the condition for this while loop will no longer be true and the code will keep going and then move on to the loop function. But as long as the button is not pressed, the program will just infinitely keep looping through here, doing nothing, waiting for the button press. Moving on to our loop function, a lot of this code is related to displaying the time on the LCD screen. So don't worry if you don't understand every single line of it, you don't really need to change it, but I will show you where you can put in your own code if you want to add other outputs like buzzers or motors to your clock. So first we make sure that the count for the number of study sessions is set to zero. And then while our count is less than the number of repeats, we are going to do the following. First, we're going to clear our LCD screen, print that it is study time, then turn the green LED on and the red LED off. We're then going to move the cursor to the second line of the LCD screen, which is where we're going to display the time. Note that in many things in computer science, we start counting at zero, so that's why this is a one instead of a two for the second row of the LCD screen. We then make sure that the seconds and minutes variables are set to zero before we start counting up the timer. The following code, which I'm not going to go through line by line, is responsible for printing out the time in MMSS format. So two digits for the minutes and two digits for the seconds. So for example, if it's been one minute and seven seconds, you want your screen to display this 0107 and not just 17 because that would look weird and that's not how we write down the time. So 
Don't worry if you don't understand every single line here, but what it's doing is every second, so after a 1000 millisecond delay, it's increasing the counter for the number of seconds, and then every 60 seconds, it's increasing the counter for the number of minutes and displaying the time until the number of minutes reaches the maximum for our study period. After enough time has elapsed, we are going to reset the timer and switch over to a break timer. So we clear the LCD screen, move the cursor back up to the top left, switch the LEDs, turn the green LED off and the red LED on, and then we have an if else statement because we have two different break durations. If we are on our last count, then we are going to take a long break, but for every other count before that, we are just going to do a short break. So that's what that break duration variable that I mentioned earlier is for. We now move the cursor down to the second line, reset minutes and seconds again, and then pretty much do the same thing. We have the same style of while loop here, except now we are comparing it to this break duration variable, where again, we are going to count up our seconds and minutes and print the timeout in MMSS format until we reach the break duration. We are then going to increase our count and go back to the top of the loop to start that all over again until we eventually reach the maximum for our count, in which case we'll have the first condition here where we will do a long break, and then we'll exit that loop, go all the way back up to the beginning of our loop function, reset count to zero, and start over with short breaks. If that was a lot to take in, don't worry about it. You don't really need to change anything in this section of the code, but what you can do is add code if you would like to add other hardware like buzzers or motors. And I have added comments in the code where you would want to do that. Pretty much right after we are changing the LEDs is where you would also want to include other things like for example, setting a buzzer, Maybe you're really concentrating on your studying, so you're not going to see the LEDs and you need an audible alarm for when it's time to switch or a motor that's going to move something around, which can also make some noise to help get your attention. This is where you would put that code to control that additional hardware and get the user's attention before you then reset the timer. Remember that you can find a parts list, circuit diagram, and example code all linked in the description of this video. For many other cool projects you can do with an Arduino, check out the rest of our YouTube channel. And for over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.